In my last video I showed how I made the jewellery drawer for my dressing table and today I'm finally getting onto my makeup drawer. The thing I needed to do was figure out how I wanted to have everything laid out. You've seen the cigarette case that I originally used for my eyeshadows but I got a second one because I want to separate them. At the moment my eyeshadows and my highlighters are all mixed up in one single case but I'd like to have one case just for the face products like highlighter, contour, blush and then the other one for the eye colours just because I realised there are a lot of colours that I like wearing quite a lot and I was getting more and more annoyed at myself for limiting myself based on a number when these are colours that I would have worn anyway and it just seems silly. The whole point of makeup is to enjoy it. I do need to put some limitations to make sure that I don't end up accumulating more than what I actually use and enjoy but if I'm actually using it I'm not going to guilt trip myself over that. So the idea was is that I wanted to have a lid which would fold out. I have two little boys which are very very curious and I've already had a lipstick ruined by them. So the last thing I want to do is for them to open up the drawer and see everything nicely laid out. So instead what I'm going to do is have these magnets on that piece of wood that you've seen so that the makeup will attach to it directly and then I can open that out like a lid or like a book, like you're opening up a book. and. Everything is stored away inside, but when it's closed, it just looks like an ordinary piece of wood. It looks very uninviting, and hopefully they move on to something a bit more interesting. Now that I had a rough idea of how I wanted everything laid out, I had these strips of wood which I'd saved from when we'd renovated the downstairs toilet, and I cut these down into the size that I needed. Quite a few times I didn't quite cut it quite perfectly and I had to go back and recut things and this was a very long and annoying process just because when I thought I was done I wasn't and I had to go back and adjust things. At this point it was quite late and since I can only really work in the evenings with everything else that I've got to do, I kept making a lot of avoidable mistakes because I was in a rush. So I just made sure that I was happy where the dividers were, glued everything down and then left the lid and decided I'd work on the rest the next day. When I first started figuring out how I wanted this drawer to be laid out, the main thing I wanted was a lid like this which would fold over the drawer and then you would open up like a book. And the idea was that it was going to be something that my kids might potentially open the drawer and instead of going for my favourite lipstick and completely scuffing it and painting the house with it, they just think, mm, that's boring, there's a piece of wood, not interested and move on. That was the plan anyway. And then the idea was is that when you would open this lid, there would be all these little magnets attached in the wood, which would be placed below the surface level so that everything was nice and smooth. And all my favorite products, the things that I regularly reached for, I could just reach very easily. It's a nice idea in theory. Didn't quite turn out like that. This is the part where I made two very preventable mistakes. The first was not checking that the magnets were the same width as the drill piece that I was using. I just assumed, hey, this is the biggest drill piece I owned. I'm sure that will do. Drilled the hole, marked everything out, and then this. The 
Mistake number two was forgetting that just because it's metal doesn't mean it will stick to a magnet. It turns out that other than the magnetic part on my Lisa Eldridge lipstick, it wasn't going to work on the lipsticks, either of them and it wasn't going to attach to the compact that I had and it wouldn't even attach to the metal lids that I'd specifically saved to use on my lip liners so that they would stick on the lid because there was not enough iron in them. So once that had happened, I had to completely rearrange the products that I wanted on the lid. In the grand scheme of things, it really wasn't the worst problem in the world. I just selected the products that would work on that. For example, the eyeshadow case, I really wanted that up on the lid and that looked really nice. And especially since I'd planned to do a really nice eye design on the front of that, I was quite looking forward to being able to see that first thing when I opened the lid. But the main problem was the lid itself, constantly having to shave it down so that it fitted exactly right on the drawer, especially once I had the hinges in. And I think I must have cut this down about three times. After the third time, I just thought, you know what? You're going to make even more stupid mistakes if you keep working at this. It's late, just finish off the edges, sand it down, and then call it a night. The day after I probably had about half an hour spare in the evening since I'd had a really long day and I had an even longer day waiting for me the day after so I thought this will be easy. Figured all I had to do was make a small raise for those hinges so that later on once I do a design on that board it would end up looking like a really old fashioned medieval style book. I'll make a little hole in the side so that those hinges can slot in really nicely. What could possibly go wrong? I was very pleased when I got this desk second hand. The main reason, apart from the fact that it was an absolute bargain find, is that it had these nice little plastic clips at the back of the drawer, which would stop it from just getting pulled right out. I have had my two little angels <laughs> try and pull out the drawers quite a few times, so that's been very useful up till now. I still wanted the drawers to not be able to be pulled out very easily, but I needed that stopper to not be on the top of the drawer where it was stopping the drawer from opening out enough for me to be able to open the lid of my makeup drawer. And now let's see if it works. Okay, let's go. Oh, yes, it works! Lucy liked to play these games, but somehow still to blame for everything that didn't work with us said that I would run away even through now that the lid was laid out how I wanted it I moved on to getting the eyeshadow sorted out as you've seen before I think on Instagram I've shown this before and I'm pretty sure I've done a video about it as well I've used an old cigarette case as an eyeshadow case and what I'd originally done is I'd used blue tack to stick down the eyeshadows but I wanted to improve that. One of the things I liked about this is that it had a spring on the inside that meant it would just open up but I wanted to remove one of them so that it would still open up nice and easy but I wouldn't be losing all that space because of those bars getting in the way. So I removed one bar and then enter my good friend magnet and I put that down on the metal Fortunately, there's enough iron in this case for the magnet to actually be effective and I was able to just stick down those eyeshadows exactly where I wanted. Because they're being held down with magnets, I'm not going to have to try and prise the thing off when I want to move the eyeshadows. It will be very, very easy to move them around. But one little trick I wanted to share is how I got these NARS eyeshadows out of the case. One of them was very, very simple. It has a very handy little hole at the bottom so that you can just pop it out. But the beautiful Chinese blue color that I got didn't have that feature. So to remove it, I had to use a slightly different method. I don't have hair straighteners, which is what a lot of people use. So instead I used a melting pot. I put that in a pan with water, got the water to boil. I put the eyeshadow inside the melting pot and then popped that in. 
I did have the lid open so that I would be able to grab it nice and easily. That glass gets very, very hot, so I wanted to be able to grab the edges and not have my fingers too close to the bottom of the melting pot. Then I got a small spatula, got that down the very corner. It's always easier to lift these things off in the corner and you're less likely to get the thing breaking and managed to get it off. I still wanted to have the details of what eyeshadow it was exactly. So I took that off the bottom of the NARS case and then stuck it at the bottom of the pan and attached it down into the case with a spare magnet. Finally, I wanted to add my long-standing obsession with eyes and paint one on the front of the case. I was trying to be very neat and put a paper underneath so that I wouldn't get paint on my desk. And then I did this. Thankfully, it was very easy to remove, so I just cleaned that away with a wet tissue before it completely ruined the surface of the desk that I've worked so hard to get nice. And then I started painting the case. This is a chalk paint, which is one of my favorite paints to use, as most of my videos lately will show you. And I just used a very, very small brush, went around the edges to paint that in. I had to do two coats of this just because the first coat was a little bit bumpy. So what I did is with the first coat is I just got a coat down. I didn't worry about the paint being perfectly even. At this point, I just wanted a coat down. Once that first layer had dried, I took a very small amount of very fine sandpaper, sanded it down, took one last coat over that, which was thinned out with water so that it wouldn't be too bumpy, waited for it to dry, and then drew the shape of an eye in an eyebrow and colored it in with variation of felt tip pens and some polychromo pencils. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. There's still a fair amount left to do. That inside part of the lid, I want to put something nice and soft, which is gonna cover up all the marks that I've left on the wood where I've stuck magnets down and then removed them because it wasn't in the right place. I've also got to do a video about the eye charts that I've made because I want to have a little makeup lookbook so that when I don't know what look I want to do for the day, I can just refer to the eye charts, but I'll do a different video about that soon and I also want to make the lid look a bit like an old medieval book that says something like my book of faces but make it look really beautiful and ornate a little bit like a paper chase notebook but that's going to have to be a video for another day for the moment I'm just going to leave it at this I hope you enjoyed the video and I will have a new one for you soon And I hope that I'm back.